guys, it's Ian from SS8000 Cars and good morning to you in central London. Now we're up in London today to pick up the second generation Rover Evoque, Range Rover Evoque. And I'm really looking forward to it, although it's not what we would normally look at, I think there's so many changes to the second generation introduced about um, three or four months ago. Um, I think it's worth having a look at and as you know we we tested the uh, the latest generation Porsche Macan uh, a few months ago and I'm really interested to know how it compares because the the new uh, Evoque has a, um, a secondary uh, electric propulsion motor which is there to supplement the uh, turbo engine, 2 litre turbo engine in the lower revs and it's quite exciting in a way because it helps the fuel consumption considerably. They're claiming 14% extra and I'm going to try and find out um, whether it does this. We've got the car for a week so we'll give it a good going over and we'll report back to you. All right guys I'll catch up with you when, when we're in the car. See you later. Hey guys, it's Ian and we're in the Generation 2 Range Rover Evoque. Now, I suppose the first thing to say is all the, uh, the basic cars, if they have automatic transmission, are fairly well specified. Now there is a lower model which is two-wheel drive and manual and you don't get some of the infotainment centre and set up functions that you get in the majority of the cars but this is the R dynamic and as you can see the first thing to say is that we've taken the three screen layout from the standard Range Rover now so we have um, all our uh, ventilation and uh, vehicle off-road settings on the on the sort of the the middle dash the cent the center dash lower dash which I hope you can see and above that you have the the ability to pull your your navigation or your home screen that we're on which has the ability to set up the navigation uh, your media media and and your phone but there are all sorts of components below that that allow you to to tinker with it what i really like is almost taken from the audi is the Ability to set up the screen right in front of you on sat nav. I, I think that's a great feature and it, it really does make the car feel incredibly modern. Now Range Rovers are very well built these days. I mean I, this car is really put together nicely. It seems that Range Rover have used quality materials. So maybe the top dash here would be nicer if you could specify it in leather and the top of the doors which I suspect is also true, but my view is overall a beautiful place to be and beautifully put together. Now the other thing that you can do is if you look at the, at the, the mirror, you can set the mirror up so it gives you a camera screen of what's behind you. I like that feature. You just push it back to back to normal. It's as if it doesn't exist. One of the things that all automatic variants of the car have is a small 76 pounds foot of torque additional benefit from an electrical assistance battery effectively which is situated under the driver's seat. So basically you have no problem whatsoever in it restricting the amount of room you have in the car and it provides you with additional power to support any turbo lag. So if you're slightly off turbo the electrical assistance will come in. It's not a full hybrid system. Apparently there is going to be a fully chargeable hybrid version that comes out in the next four or five months. This car was launched in December 2018 so the first deliveries are just coming off the the production line now and there's there's a fair amount of room in the rear. Yeah. 
first impressions are very good. I like the um, the fixed panoramic roof, but I you can get a panoramic roof that opens, I believe, as in all Range Rovers. Um, it's just very well equipped. I mean, I might not have it in black myself. Um, it appears to be to be silver with black, um, but I'm you know I like it. I think it's a very very comfortable place to be, and the seats are really thick. So I'll come back to you later guys, but first impressions, extremely good. Certainly makes me feel um, that I, very much like I was in, I'm in the Velar because it's a little smaller inside than the Velar, but other than that, it's identically set up. Um, I think when they bring the hybrid version of this in, which I suspect will be 40, 45, the entry level price for this is 31. They do seem to have this this market really well covered. They're all two litre, four cylinder, I believe Ingenium engines, which is the latest Range Rover offering. All right, guys, well, listen, it's Ian from SSA 1000 Cars signing off. Thank you for watching.